Hello and welcome to the second video in the series on the Teams Rooms resource account. In this video, it's going to be all about PowerShell and uh, Azure Active Directory. Now, why would you use PowerShell? There's two really good reasons to use PowerShell with Azure Active Directory. The one is that it's repeatable which makes it really good for documentation. So if you have change management or something like that, where you need to document the changes you made and then the rollback, it's super easy to do with PowerShell. With uh, UI, you user interface, you kind of have to do a lot of uh, copying and pasting and things like that. And quit flipping my face. Uh, you have to do a copy, a screenshots and that sort of thing. And uh, the other part is with you can get into you can get into scripting. So if you need to create like 50 uh, resource accounts for hot desks, you can just go ahead and create a script. So take the commands I'm gonna show you and at the end I do show a little scripting sample. Um, you can take that and then in like no time have your 50 hot desk accounts for Teams Display, Teams display um, put together. So uh, let's talk about flipping, why, why, stop, stop, don't, don't. So let's talk about PowerShell resource accounts, Azure Active Directory. All right, let me create a resource account using Azure AD 2.0. First time through, first time you ever set up a workstation for PowerShell, you have to run these two commands. One is set execution policy to unrestricted. Unrestricted is a little liberal, but it works for me and in my environment. If your environment's a little stricter about it, change that value to something that will at least have the credit, uh, the required permissions to install a PowerShell module. So the module is now installed. Now from this point forward, anytime you run PowerShell, you just need to run connect dash exchange online. And this is where you sign in to Microsoft 365. So I've got cached credentials. I'll pick those off the list, but you may have to type in your username and password and maybe go through a multi-factor, a second or third factor. Let me clear the screen, get us back to the top here and paste in my new command. So what I have here is new dash mailbox. We're creating a mailbox, not a user account. All resource accounts are Microsoft Exchange resources. That's why we call them resource accounts. And this is of type room. It's a specific type of resource account. Here's the email address that I'm gonna use. Note that I have a naming standard that all my Microsoft Teams rooms start with MTR dash. Now you could do this for all your devices that use a resource account, a Teams rooms resource account, or you could use different ones. So if you're using Teams Display, you could start with like MTD for Microsoft Teams Display or HD for hot desking or anything. It doesn't matter. Uh, as we sit here today, this isn't going to make a big deal. But as you get into Azure AD and dynamic groups and Intune, this starts becoming really useful to have a naming standard. Most IT departments already have naming standards. Create a new one for Teams Rooms. I mean, this is the name. This is the friendly name here, Town View Conference Room 3. That is the name end users will see when they look to book the room. Here is an exchange alias. It's of type room. We're definitely going to enable the resource, uh, the room mailbox account. Now here we're setting the password. We're going to set it to this password, one, two, three, four. Keep in mind, this is clear text. So uh, you may or may not want to run this command in your environment and change the password a different way. Anyway, I just hit enter and a new Exchange Online mailbox is being created. Okay, that took about 15 seconds for the mailbox to be created. We now have a mailbox, but we're not quite there yet. We need to set some values. So we're gonna set calendar processing on this uh, alias on this mailbox and we're going to set up auto accept. We want this because we want the mailbox to automatically accept meeting invites. Uh, you don't have to do this on every room, but in 95% of the cases you'll want auto accept. We don't want the organizer name as the subject. Basically, if the meeting is called uh, weekly scrum meeting, if I set this value to true, it'll be like Adele Vance's meeting. It won't say weekly scrum. We don't want that. Delete comments and process external meeting messages. These two we put in to make sure direct guest join works. This is the ability to join Cisco WebEx and Zoom meetings uh, directly from Teams Rooms. So we want to put these two in here. We don't want to delete the subject, much like this organizer to subject thing. If we delete the subject, the subject 
of the meeting will now be like Adele Vance or whoever the organizer is. And remove the private property. Hey, if somebody set the meeting to private, keep it. Uh, I don't care about that. And then we're gonna set this as a Microsoft Teams meeting room as the reply. So when the meeting room sends the RSVP back to the organizer, that's a little bit of text we can throw in to let them know that this is a Microsoft Teams meeting room, so it's a smart room. Now I'm going to disable password expiration and assign the license to this resource account. I'm gonna do it using a Microsoft Graph. That's the way Microsoft is headed with PowerShell for a lot of these commands, these user commands. So first thing I need to do, again, is install a module. This one, Microsoft.Graph.Users.Actions. If you want to install the whole Microsoft Graph, just install dash module, Microsoft.Graph, have at it. It's a little overkill for this command, but who am I to stop you from doing that, right? So let's wait until this, uh, it gets installed and move on to the next commandlet. Okay, now we're going to connect to uh, Microsoft Graph, setting some permissions and whatever. So there we are, connected to Microsoft Graph. Next, I'm gonna run update-mg user. This is the name of our conference room and set the password policy to disable password expiration and the usage location to US. If you're in a different country, use a two letter code for your country to set that. Now we need to assign the license. This is fairly straightforward. First, I'm going to run this command, get the Microsoft Graph subscribed SKU and then just select the part number in the ID and sort by the part number. What we want, so here we see the SKU part number. I'm gonna go ahead and inside, uh, assign meeting room. So this is the value that I'm gonna copy and put into my commandlet. Finally, I am going to run set-mg user license minus user ID. Here's my guy, conference room three. Add licenses, SKU ID equals the SKU ID. And once this is done, I'm ready to validate that this is all set up correctly and I'm gonna do that using Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Here I am in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. I wanna to get to resources. So I'll click show all, resources becomes available. Let me pin that for future use. Click on rooms and equipment and we should see our conference room three in here somewhere. There it is, W conference room three. There is our account. So it was created and it looks there. And if I click edit exchange settings, we should have some auto accept and a few things we should be able to explore here within exchange. While that's loading, I'm gonna pop back, go to users, active users, and find my Townview Conference Room 03. Townview Conference Room 3, there it is. Click on that, we should see that it has a license assigned. There it is, Microsoft Teams Room standard license is assigned and it does have a password. But if I did not want to set the password via PowerShell, that, that clear text, I could come in here, tap on reset password and type it in this way. So here we are on our room mailbox. I click on booking options. I can see this is the uh, command we wanted to put back in there. So we can see that this account was created. So now you can run off and use this resource account on all of the Teams devices that support resource accounts. Let me show you one more thing, and that is how to assign multiple licenses to a Teams Rooms account. Now, you should already have the Microsoft Graph PowerShell module installed. If you've skipped ahead to this section, skip back and see how that's done. Like we did last time, we're gonna connect to Microsoft Graph. It's got my credentials already cached in, so we're good. And like last time, I'm going to list my licenses that I have in my tenant. Now, here is the Teams Rooms one I'm going to use, and here's the calling license I'm going to use. So I'm gonna assign a calling plan and the Teams Rooms license to this account. So I'm gonna create two variables. The first variable, Teams Rooms SKU ID hosts the SKU ID for my Teams Rooms license. And the second one, calling plan SKU ID holds the SKU ID of this PSTN license. Tap enter in there. Now I'm gonna create an array. If you're not familiar with what arrays are, arrays are a collection of objects. So I'm gonna basically, to its simplest terms, create a variable that contains two variables. So this add licenses variable contains this variable and this variable, which were defined up here. And finally, we run the set mg user license commandlet to actually assign these two licenses to this account. So we got a success. Now, if I hop over to Microsoft 365 Admin Center, go to my conference room three, check licenses, licenses and apps, we can see now I have two licenses assigned.
Now that I've shown you how to create Teams Rooms resource accounts via PowerShell, the really cool sprinkling of magic on top is being able to create scripts to create multiple accounts all at once. A way to do that is to create a CSV file, a comma delimited format. In the first column, I've got a couple of the required fields that I want, and then the name, the email address, the description, the alias, the capacity, and then my super complex password. Once I have my CSV file created, I can then create a PowerShell script to read in the CSV file and then for each one of the rooms inside here, run all the commands that I've shown you so far. I'm not gonna give you this script because uh, honestly, I don't wanna support it. There's no troubleshooting, there's no error handling, but if you know someone who's handy at PowerShell, it should take them all of about 20 minutes to get something roughed up like this. This probably took me like five minutes to uh, knock out and again without testing and without troubleshooting. So that is the real power is if you buy Teams displays for 50 hotel cubes, you can create the all those rooms really quickly and easily as opposed to having to use the tediousness of the web interface. So they're at admin.microsoft.com.